So I'm in the middle of applying to internships right now, and I thought about making one of those PCB business cards, specifically one that can play tic-tac-toe. First, I had to figure out the display, and the most obvious choice would probably be an OLED screen, but they're pretty small and also pretty expensive, which isn't great for a business card where I'll need multiple copies of them. A dot matrix is another choice, but they're really thick, and I like the business card to be as thin as possible. So I made my own matrix of 18 LEDs, where these LEDs are blue and represent player 1, and these LEDs are red to represent player 2. This ended up costing under 50 cents, which was pretty nice. Next, I needed a microcontroller to control these LEDs. It'll need at least 18 pins for the LEDs and one pin for the button for a total of 19 GPIO pins. I decided to use the ATmega 328P AU microcontroller for this. It has 23 GPIO pins and is pretty compact and cheap, which is nice for a business card. With all this figured out, I used Autodesk Eagle to design the schematic, which I'll post in the project page. I then designed and routed the actual PCB board. When I finished designing, I exported the Gerber, uploaded it to JLC PCB, and ordered the board with their SMD assembly service because I'm too lazy to solder everything myself. Alright, so it finally arrived after a week, so let's take a look at it. Oh, got a nice keychain. And here are the cards, and they actually came out really nice. Um, they actually have a matte texture, which I'm really pleasantly surprised with. So the SMD service was able to solder on most of the parts, but I still had to solder the button and USB port myself. I was able to get the button on, but unfortunately I blotched the USB port and bridged all the pins together since they were tiny and I didn't have SMD equipment at the time. I'll make a follow-up part 2 video where I use my school's lab equipment to solder it on. But for now, I'll use these breakout pins to power it. Next, I needed to program it. So I first burned the Arduino bootloader to the card using an Arduino Uno as a makeshift programmer. Then I uploaded a basic program that tested the LEDs. It was then that I realized that this segment didn't work at all. When I looked at the design again, I discovered that it was because I was pretty stupid and connected these LEDs to input-only pins. So I'll have to place another order with the corrected design, and this will be in the follow-up part 2 video along with the functional USB port. For the time being, I pushed on and finished the code ignoring that one non-functioning segment. And here it is working. Uh, I programmed it so that your current position is indicated by this blinking blue uh, light right here. If you want to move it, you press on this single control button. Uh, briefly, so that moves me to the next position. And then to set the position, uh, you just hold it. And now this is solid blue indicating a marked spot, and now it is a uh, red turn indicated by red blinking. So let me move red to here and set it. So now this is red, so let me just make this a blue win by making this blue. And uh, I'll make this blue, so now it's a row of blue, and it blinks blue because blue won because it got three in a row. So let me make it a red win now. Uh, I'll just make it a red diagonal line. And now it's a red one, uh, indicated by red blinking. And then if you tie both uh, colors blink, so let me try to do that right now. Now uh, both colors are blinking, indicating a tie. So that was two player mode, but I also uh, coded in a single player mode that you can activate by pressing and holding the single control button for over five seconds. So now it's single player mode indicated by the one. So let me just place a blue mark here. All right, it looks like the card, the AI, uh, placed the red mark here, and it's actually a pretty dumb AI because uh, I currently just guesses, but it's surprisingly decent for tic-tac-toe since there really aren't a lot of positions, but uh, let me place a mark here um, and a mark here, okay, and let me just take the win by making a diagonal, and I won. So to switch back to uh, two-player mode again like we had before, you just hold the control button again for five uh, seconds. And now it's two-player mode, indicated by the two. 
So that's basically it. I'll post a follow-up part 2 video soon with the fixed design where all the segments work and with a functional USB port, so stay tuned. However, you can find the code and schematics with the fixed design in the description, and thanks for watching.